For Krama Media's quality, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Democratic Alliance Shadow Minister of Social Development, Bridget Masango, to discuss the Sasa grant delays. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity. So Sasa grant recipients and pensioners were recently stranded uh, without funds because of a so-called uh, glitch in the postbank system. Now, in, a, in one of your statements uh, on the postbank uh, payment failures, you said uh, that uh, Social Development Minister Lindy Wezulu's attempt uh, to solely blame uh, the bank is disingenuous. Who else should be blamed uh, for this glitch? The problem that we've had uh, that took um, another level on the 5th of September is the problem between the Department of Social Development through SASA, which is the agency of government, and the beneficiaries of social grants. So as members of parliament, we are holding the executive to account. And in this case, that would be Minister Zulu. So she cannot shift the blame to anyone else because the beneficiaries applied to SASA uh, to, to, to the Department of Social Deve Development through SASA. So the blame stays with the minister because she is the one with whom the bug stops. And that is why we, we said, and rightly so, that the shifting of the blame is disingenuous at, at worst. And now you've indicated that uh, you will also lodge a complaint uh, with the South African Human Rights Commission into SASA's continuous failures what are the developments in that regard and what are you hoping will come out of the SARC findings? We did um, go to the SA South African Human Rights Commission on Tuesday last week and we were assured that the investigation or the assessment that they will do, initial assessment, will be uh, communicated to us as complainants within seven working days from Tuesday. And the reason why we did that we went to the uh, Human Rights Commission is because this was not the first. It was the worst, but it was not the first. You will remember that from the time that a uh, South African post office at the, at the time uh, who, who later ceded this agreement to Post Bank, there were glitches from the get-go. And those glitches have not stopped. And so this is why we thought this is a human rights violation. Uh, to, to the beneficiaries, especially the older persons who were mostly affected on the 5th of September. Can you now briefly highlight the challenges that Sasa Grant beneficiaries are facing because of this issue? The Sasa Grant uh, beneficiaries are facing a whole lot of challenges at the moment uh, from their money not being paid because I must mention at this stage that there are older persons who have not received their grants, who are still, as, as late as recent as yesterday, were sending messages to say, Bridget, can you please intervene? Because they have not received their older person's grant. So that is one of the greatest challenge that they are facing. We do know that a research was done recently that says that on average, each older person uh, who received a grant of 2,080 rand per month is looking after at least four people in their family. So that is another problem. These people still continue to go to post offices and not get their services. They still continue to be in queues and they are not being attended to. And this for us is a violation of human rights, basic, basic human rights. The Post Bank's uh, board of directors uh, has been fired and the company has been placed under administration after a forensic investigation found that the uh, Post Bank had unlawfully maintained contracts with the suppliers. Do you consider this accountability or do you think they were just let off the hook? It is very interesting because the minister would say that they were let go but the members of the board, as you would have seen in the letter that they wrote, they actually say that they resigned. So we strongly believe that whatever investigation that needs to be done, it has to be done to determine who it is that is actually at, at fault as far as this is concerned. And now I recently attended uh, Action SA's policy conference and they shared uh, their strategy 
on solving the grand uh, challenge. I'm sure the DA has its own strategy on how to solve uh, the issue of grants. If you don't mind sharing it with our viewers. All right. We as the Democratic Alliance actually have a social development policy that we have launched uh, recently, which not only looks at grants, because grants, we believe, for some categories of our population are not a, a permanent solution. We believe that for the older persons, yes, grants must be given uh, for people with disabilities and so on and so forth. But we believe that for ec economically active people, grants must be a stopgap measure while the economy of the country is improving and, or is made to improve so that people can get out and get jobs. We are very mindful of many, many young people between obviously the ages of uh, 19 to 59 who are at the moment recipients of the Social Relief of Distress Grant. We are saying that that has to be done. In fact, that, that grant should be increased because what can anyone do with 350 rand? But what we are saying is that that grant is a stopgap measure while government creates an environment for businesses to thrive, for people to be able to create jobs uh, in, with small and, and medium sized businesses so that people can get out of grants and go to, to work so that they can have the dignity restored to be able to look after their families. The situation that we have now is a crisis situation. It is not a situation that we should be hoping to continue. But the Democratic Alliance's uh, social development policy outlines exactly how it is that we are going to do that. And lastly, in July, uh, in a statement where you were complaining about the rising food inflation, that is hitting the poorest where it hurts. Amongst your uh, social development policy proposals, you also mentioned that um, the child support grant must be increased uh, yes. to align with the official food poverty line. Don't you think that this could actually bloat uh, finances further? No, no, no. We, we actually outline even the context that we are speaking about. We are saying that... The, the child support grant needs to be increased. Obviously, South Africa is having a problem of stunting at the moment. South Africa is having a problem of high food prices that are unaffordable for mothers to buy food for their children. But we are saying, at the moment, we are having a huge problem of government taking billions and billions of rands to pay for the, the, um, the SOEs. Uh, to keep throwing money at SOEs that have failed. And we are saying that money can be redirected directed immediately into uh, ensuring that the social services are adequate to ensure that the child support grant is increased to at least, we are saying we, we are mindful of the fact that the, even the lower bound poverty line is not sufficient, but we are saying it's better than what is happening now. So we are saying the environment must be made in such a way that government redirects the money that is being uh, uh, wasted in corruption, the money that is uh, being spent in, 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 in uh, paying for the SOEs that are failing, that money can be redirected to people that need it. And those are the people that are beneficiaries or, or, or that are applicants for grants. There was Democratic Alliance Shadow Minister of Social Development, Bridget Masango, discussing the Sasa grant delays.